Hello Cyber Explorers, this is XK and welcome to Cyber Explorer. In today's video, I'm going to talk about Advanced Encryption Standard or AES. I'm also going to show you how to write a code in Python to encrypt something using AES. By the way, just to clarify, I decided to jump on this topic to address a problem faced by one of my viewers named Arujit. In one of the comment section, he requested me to make a video on data encryption using Python. Well, I decided to go with AES as it is one of the standard algorithms used nowadays. I hope it helps, Arijit. Anyhow, before getting started, I want to give you a brief intro about AES. AES is a block cipher. And by block cipher, I mean AES encrypts in blocks. There are different variants of AES. One is AES-128 and another is AES-256 but today I'll be mostly covering AES-128. AES-128 has blocks of 128 bits or 16 bytes. That means it can only encrypt a chunk of 16 bytes at once. But the data that we use every day often exceeds this limit. We might need megabytes even gigabytes of data to encrypt so in order to do that aes appends data like this but wait this shows that it always appends a data chunk of 16 bytes what if our data is not a multiple of 16 bytes let's say it is 41 bytes. In this scenario, AES adds an extra 7 bytes at the end to make this last chunk 16 bytes, and this process is known as padding. In the code that I'm going to show you, I'll also show you how to do this padding by using the inbuilt functionality present in AES library. Now, look at the modes of AES. So as I said that AES is a block cipher. So in order to encrypt large data files, we need to merge them somehow, right? And that's what these modes are for. This is called CBC, Cypher Block Chaining, Cypher Feedback, CFP, Output Feedback, OFP, Electronic Codebook, ECB, or the Counter Mode, CTR. The Counter Mode is the one of the most popular modes right now. But I'm going to show you all of them. However, for sake of the length of this video, I'm going to only show you the first three of them in this video. And I will have a separate video for these two. So why I chose these three? It's because the way they work in the library is very similar. That's why I want to keep these three in one video and the two of them in a separate video. Now let's get started. With the programming. As an editor, I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook. It makes things much easier. As you can see, I divided my code into four parts. One is imports, inputs, encryption, and decryption. To begin, I will import the AES class from the crypto library. Next, I'll be adding the plain text. Then I will add the key. Now you can see I first converted the key, which is my key, to bytes form, and then I used padding to increase the size of the this key to something which AES can accept, which is 16 bytes in this case. That's why I used AES dot block size, and for this I have to import the pad functionality. Next, I will create an IV or initialization vector. If you don't know what an initialization vector is, for now, just take it as a seed, a random number that AES needs to begin with. I'll be discussing more about this IV when I will talk about the theoretical aspects of AES in another video in the future. Now, it's time to define our encryption function. 
we define our function called encrypt that accepts a plain text which is this now in order to use this plain text we need to convert it to unicode transformation format of 8 bits or for utf8 and just like anything else we also need to pad the data bytes next we create an aes object by using the aes.new function this has three parameters one is the key which is this one the mode and this mode can be anything from the list that i shown you uh, in the first part of the video and then we have iv which is this next it's time for encryption we use the previously created AES object to call the encrypt function on the padded bytes and that results in the ciphertext. Now simply return the ciphertext. To evaluate, we'll simply call the encrypt function and then print it. Now let's run it. So you can see the ciphertext in bytes format. By using the hexlify function in binasci, we can convert it to hex. But for that, we need to import binasci. Now let's run it. So you can see the hex output of the ciphertext. Now let's move on to the decryption part. Similar to the encryption counterpart, we will create a decrypt function, but this time on the ciphertext. Again, we'll be creating this AES object, the same AES.new and the key, the mode, IV, same as before. Now we use the AES object to call the decrypt function on the ciphertext, and this function returns the raw bytes that we need. Raw bytes also contains the padded bytes padded by AES, so we need to remove that. We use the unpad function on the raw bytes with AES log size, and this results in the extracted bytes, which is without the padded bytes. But for this, we need to import the unpad functionality. Now we simply return the extracted bytes. To verify if it is correct, we will call the decrypt function with the ciphertext, and that should result in the plain text, right? And at last, we add the print statement. Let's run it. So here it is, the same as the initial text. In order to convert to ASCII, we just use the decode function on the plain text with the parameter ASCII. And there you go. We have the same string that we started with. And that's how encryption and decryption works on AES for CBC mode. Now let's try for the CFB mode. But we need plain text as an argument. On the decryption side, is the same, just change to CFP. Now if you want to use OFP mode, it is just same as CFP, and same OFP. And there we go, AES, CBC, CFP and OFP in one single video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use it on AES, CTR mode and ECB mode. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up button and share it with someone who you think might enjoy as well. I will upload more videos on topics related to cybersecurity and programming in Python on this channel. Also, I will be making videos on summarizing important case studies, research papers, vulnerabilities and more fascinating topics that you probably won't find in textbooks.
so please hit the subscribe button if you want to learn more about the complex topics in security in simple terms. By the way, if you want me to make a video on a particular topic or a paper in security, please mention it in the comments section below. I will see you soon. Until then, stay safe and stay curious.